This is Mishloch Manot. That means that you're really like my Rea. You're really like, you're really like God. You're also really like my intimate. You know, I love my son. I love my parents. Um, you know, so can I extend that to loving the person who's also the stranger? And that, that's, that's, the, that's what I take here from the Sfat Emet, you know. everybody there are specific mitzvahs ways in which we experience the Purim festival and so the first thing that we do is we gather in in shul and synagogue tonight and tomorrow morning and we read the scroll of esther two times tomorrow there are three mitzvahs uh, in addition to that, number one, later on in the day, we have a Purim Se'uda. We have a festive meal in honor of, uh, of Purim where certain foods are served. And of course, there is the imbibing, imbibing in the alcoholic beverages if one is into that. Then there are two very important mitzvahs. One is called Matana Yislev It's a It's related to tzedakah, the giving of charity. And the final one, which is what we're going to be centering on in a moment, is called Mishleach Manais, when the Jews were so happy at the end of the story. So one of the ways that the community of Jews in Persia at that time celebrated is that they sent to each other uh, food, gifts of food. Is You can go next door to your neighbor or through, uh, through an intermediary, you can send a package, Mishleach Manos, of two cooked foods, to at least one person. And now the Swasemis will bring us a beautiful interpretation of the Mishlei Achmanos. Yeah, he's going to take it a, a notch deeper, as, as usual. That's why we're here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Go a little deeper. Before we even start drinking, we're already going. <laughs> and, you know, in some way, when, you, when you're, uh, uh, you're learning Hasidus, it's kind of like getting drunk, you know, in some, uh, in some, some way. Uh, you, you can well, say, well, you said a mouthful, Reverend Ruben, because Hasidus uh, is spoken about as the yayin. Yeah. As the wine of Torah, as Torah itself is the water, you need it to live. You can't live without it, without yeah. water. But to get a little deeper and yeah. to open up the mind a little bit, uh, uh, a one or two lachayims yeah. helps to open up the brain <laughs> and the mind. So yeine shel the Kabbalah and the Hasidus yeah. is called the wine of Torah, actually. So that's right. <laughs> you could say that the Hasidim are doing Purim all all year long. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not over doing it, but uh, exactly <laughs> not not overdoing. Okay, so I just want to say uh, and thank you for uh, obviously mentioning the matanot uh, levionim, the tzedakah aspect of Purim, and I want to say specifically if you're in uh, Rockland or Bergen County uh, and also Westchester, uh, there's a, a group of uh, rabbis and lay leaders from uh, Bergen County who are going to Poland and Ukraine on Sunday. And they're collecting tzedakah, they're collecting gifts from the community. Uh, this is at Temple Emmanuel. Uh, you can, I think they're open for collecting the gifts. Uh, they're asking for bulk um, supplies for, uh, for the refugees, basically. And um, so tomorrow all day until, I mean, every day, uh, until Thursday uh, evening, they're uh, still uh, accepting uh, uh, donations. So I want to specifically recommend that if you're in our area, uh, there's a specific list of what they're collecting. It's not just anything. They're, they have a list of the supplies they're uh, wanting. Send me an email and I will send you that list. And our e-bulletin that's going out today also is going to have the whole list on it. And, you know, so that's a great, there's a great need and great opportunity to, to help in that um, um, uh, side of the world right now. So I would uh, urge and just uh, humbly request that to, to give a little something uh, to help out the Hebrew Learning Circles, which does unbelievable work in the Rockland County, Westchester, and the general uh, tri-state yeah. vicinity. Yeah, so that's my two cents. <laughs> thank you, Rebelli. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, humbly accept uh, tzedakah if people want to donate. And obviously on the website, there's 
um, uh, there's a donate button. Thank you for that, Ravelli. But uh, we we uh, we appreciate that. Um, and I'm gonna. Uh, I'd like to uh, actually quick announcements. Uh, first of all, for those of you who want to see the uh, the Hebrew text of the Sfat Emet, you uh, go to our website, Hebrewani Circles. Uh, obviously, you can also found, find the donate uh, button there too. Uh, there it is. But what you would do, you'd go to um, Jewish resources and to Parsha videos, and I'm going to click and show you where that is. And we have uh, the video is not yet posted, but the source sheet is posted, and you can um, read along uh, the Hebrew. The next, next thing is while you're on the website, um, you can browse around and look at our programs specifically. Um, take a look at uh, simple dot meaningful bar bat mitzvah. It's in the bar in bat mitzvah uh, drop down menu. If you'd like to join uh, this session every Wednesday morning at nine o'clock, uh, you can do that through we set up a meetup.com um, room for this, and uh, you can join and view the session live and then. When the session is over, then you can stay for a Q&A. Finally, if you would uh, like and subscribe at the end of this, obviously we would uh, much appreciate that. Umitzvat mishloch manot nira'a lavo la'avat Yisrael. He says, and the mitzvah, the practice of mishloch uh, manot, that Rebelli explained uh, beautifully of, of giving uh, gifts of food to uh, uh, friends, neighbors, and what he's doing here is he's asking, well, what is that about? And he's answering. <laughs> it, it seems like this is for the purpose of bringing us to the love of Israel. Uh, just, uh, you know, just, just write out. This, this is it, right? We give. Now, it's intuitive, really. I mean, you give some, somebody a gift. You know, there, there's love. It's not just giving. It's not, you know, I'm not the mailman. I'm not the, you know, I'm not the, the UPS driver. It's I'm giving this. It comes from my heart, right? This is, this is I want to give, you know, we give it to neighbors, to friends. We want to give it to people in a way of showing them, oh, I care about you. I, I, I want to be connected with you. So how about Israel? She katuv ish yudi. And he quotes here from um, from the Megillah Sester. Yeah, so here, right away, this Fasemis, who's very uh, dense in his um, allusions, yeah. so he throws a Medrash, and he, he throws a Midrash, and he throws a Pusik uh, uh, from the Megillah Sester. So in chapter 2 of the scroll, we introduce our hero, Mordechai, um, is one of the heroes. And uh, it introduces him by saying, by in, it introduces him calling him Ish Yehudi, a man of Yehuda. That's right. Now, without going that, into that, that, parenthetically, that's where we get the, the, the name Jew. That's the first yes. thing that, that this yes. is where the. But the question is that he wasn't, that one of the 12 tribes was Yehuda. And he's introduced as Ish Yehudi, a man of yes. Judah. We learn from this uh, that. To call someone a Jew is a big thing. And he was a Jew. The Medrash puts a play on words and it takes the letter He, the Hebrew letter He of Yehudi, mm -hmm. and it changes it into a similar looking letter, Ches, the eighth letter, Yehidi. He was alone. He was yeah. alone like Abraham, the first Jew, was alone in his belief in one invisible, omnipresent, omniscient God. So too, more, this man Mordechai, in his behavior, he re, he repel he rebels against the idol worship. He won't bow down to this guy, and so he is considered like Abraham to be the epitome of what right. a Jew is. Right. Not only the belief in one God, but set apart yeah. from others because of his uh, intense uh, willingness to give himself up, to give his life up, even. To uh, not fall into the trap of the of the idol worship, so that's Yechidi, my lone one. That's right, my lone one. And I, I think that where uh, he's going with this is that that he's he's a symbol of all the people. He unifies within him 
all the people of Israel. All the yes, in, in, our, in a deep level, where we are deeply in our souls. Right, that, that's where, so thank you. As it is brought uh, in, um, in the Torah, in, in the book of uh, Le- Leviticus, it says, And you shall uh, love your fellow as yourself. And this is Klal Gadol Batura. I think Rabbi Akiva said that. Uh, so, so the uh, so this is actually it, it's brought in the in the Gemara that Rabbi Akiva said that this verse from um, uh, from the Torah is a uh, uh, core principle in the Torah. So to love your fellow as yourself. That's right. No matter what the mitzvah is, even something that seems far removed from the concept of love or loving one's fellow or being kind or being charitable, everything in the Torah is ultimately focused towards, the goal is to bring you to love others, which is an amazing thing. And we're going to get into the connection between that and the and the soon. And also parenthetically, I think I remember, I, I, I can't, I don't want to, I haven't checked this myself, but that uh, the verse, after Kamocha, you should love your fellows yourself, is actually in chapter 19, verse 18 in, in Leviticus, which is actually the center of the Torah. Mm, this is wow. the middle, it's the middle book. I haven't actually done the, you Not know, the test. My, my own counting, right. but uh, what I heard is, I mean, first of all, the book of Leviticus is the central book of the Torah. Right, so we have two books before uh, Genesis and and um, and Exodus, and then we have two books after, which is uh, Numbers and and uh, Deuteronomy, and that chapter nineteen, verse eighteen, is like the center of the book of Leviticus. So this is actually literally the center of uh, of wow. the book. It comes to show that this is you know the haftan and you shall love yeah. is central to to our tradition, central to Torah. And um, I get chills you know, about that. Okay. Uh, a perush, I'll continue. A perush, sheadam davuk benekuda chiyut hapnimiyut. Vesham kol bnei Yisrael echad. And so to, to translate, the, the meaning of this is that when a person is um, connected, a uh, cleaved, davuk means cleaved, so it's like attached to the nekudat chiyut hapnimiyut in the inner um uh, uh, point of vitality or of life force within him. <clears throat> this is a concept that the Sfatim it re- repeats a lot. This is it's, it's almost like one of his uh, his uh, kind of the way he talks about the neshama about the about the soul of a person is that there's within us within our soul there's a there's a point an inner point of life force and uh, so. Just understand, he's not just saying it. He's he's really. This is. I, I think this is his chiddush. I think it's his language, as far as I know, and and he. They, that's how he talks about the innermost of the soul of a person, and he says that again, that one that, that when a person connects to that place inside oneself, v'sham kol bnei Yisrael echad. In that place, all the people of Israel unite and become one. Inside each person, no, because on the level that we are comprised, humans are comprised of body and soul. On the level of soul, we all emanate from the same source. Mm-hmm. So, although our bodies might look different externally, mm-hmm. on the on the deepest level, on the on the level of creation, mm-hmm. our soul, which enlivens, that's what he means by the chayes pnimius, the inner life force, which is our soul, right. our spirit. On that level, we're all the same. We all emanate, actually, from Adam Rishon, what's called the Neshama Klalis, the, the general soul of all humanity, mm-hmm. right? And that's why the sages say that uh, we were created one, mm-hmm. because then if it was two at the same time, then we could argue, of course, there'd be an argument, who's more important? <laughs> <laughs> but if it's just one, yeah. one human, and we all emanate from the, from the right. same person, Right. Uh, then we're all ultimately equal. That's the great equalizer. And that's on the level of soul. That's right. that's right. And if I look at myself, I recognize my own soul. So now he's saying that if I recognize that everyone is really a part of the same giant soul, 
Right, right. That's so essentially, saying. right. So essentially, all souls, all human souls, are part of one soul. But I think what, also where he's going here, which is a little controversial to, to many of us, even especially those of us who are really have a have a sense of the universal. What he's talking about here is that at some level, uh, also, all souls of the people of Israel are one soul. So you have these different levels. So within me, I'm connected to all human beings, but also within me, I'm connected to all other Jews, you know. And, and I think what he's pointing here to, which is it's a theologically challenging concept for a lot of both Jews and, and other people, is that our spirituality is not only individualistic. It's not only me trying to connect with God, but in the Jewish tradition, it's the people together. My spirituality depends on the spirituality of all the Jewish people. In other words, Jewish spirituality is not an um, individual project, but it's really a collective, a people's project. And I think that's where he's going here. So <clears throat> what he's saying is uh, not only that it's nice to love other people. Yeah, it's nice to love all Jews. You know, it's a sweet thing. I should love all Jews. But it's also, there's something about that love of all Jews that is essential to connecting to the spiritual essence of all Jews. And, and I can't individually, I really can't move forward spiritually without connecting to my brothers and sisters of the Jewish faith, you know, specifically. And I know for some people, this is uh, challenging and puzzling because why not just be all universal? All people are good people, which is true. I mean, the Torah teaches us that, as you, you just taught us, you know, Adam Arishon, that's, that's true. But for us Jews specifically, there, there is this puzzling element that I think only makes sense from the Nikudap Nimit. That's why the Svatemit is going there. If you're thinking from that little uh, point of soul within you, then it may start to make sense. <laughs> so I'll continue. Bimele, oev lereu gam ken. <laughs> so, uh, so now he's, he's trying to make sense of the hafta l'racha kamocha. If, if you lo to love your fellow as yourself, he you say if you go to that, connect to that place inside you, and you see that all the people of Israel are are connected, and all the people in the universe are connected, uh, then sure you love your fellow as yourself, right? That that's you know no brainer, right? Then 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 you understand that love. For your neighbor. Vizeu atzmo mashikatav rashi reecha kadosh baruchu. Ayen sham shakol echad kanat. The concept here yeah. is amazing. Reecha hakadosh baruchu. The haftal reecha kamaycha. The haftal reecha. He's calling your friend. Your he's calling God your friend. He's saying reecha kamaycha is that actually we are all one with God Himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and also on, on, on a more simplistic level, I mean, just God as friend, as opposed to God as king, God as father, God as uh, you know, Shekhinah, God as as, as mother, right. whatever. Uh, here is he's saying so he, because he brings this because remember again we go back to and you love your fellow as yourself. So the commentary commentators ask who what does fellow mean. <laughs> does fellow mean your actual neighbor? Does fellow mean uh, any any friend? Does fellow mean a Jewish person? You know, your fellow Jew? Does uh, fellow mean any human being? And here the Rashi says fellow actually means God. Right, because yeah. when, you, when you attain that level of recognizing the uh, everyone's soul within my soul and etc. And you and you're miyached. Right. We are we are unifying God's oneness. Yeah, we're bringing it all together. So that makes God right. one with us right. as a peer. Right, and and you could say that I and in my friend when I connect with my friend, I I see God in my friend. Oh, so, oh yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah. it kind of goes goes both ways like that. Right. All right. So we'll continue. 
ומרדכי היה כלל כל ישראל. And as we saw, see before, and Mordechai was the, um, was the entirety of the people of Israel. He represented, it was almost like he was the soul of the people of Israel. Yeah. And it's through love that he became the unity of all the people of Israel. And because of that, he was able to, um, to effectuate merit on all of Israel. Because, because of his behavior and actions in the scroll of Esther, which you'll uh, hear tonight in, in Shul, yeah. Yeah, because of his mysterious nefesh, his self-sacrifice on behalf of the Jewish people, and his, the risks, the physical risks and spiritual risks yeah. he took, so, and because he represents the, the ultimate yeah. Jew, Yehudi, therefore, in that merit, we sort of uh, tag along right. and reap the benefit, well, even all these years later, of his actions. Right, right, right. Yep. The nikra yechidi kanal. And that's, so he goes back to that commentary, and, and a Yehudi, uh, a person of the tribe of Judah, Nikra Yechidi is called the unified one or the only one, as we read, read above. So, Shedavuk b'nekudach yut shesham makom achdut, because he was connected to that point of life force, which is the location of unity within him. Says this Fatim. So, so he's uh, so he's bringing uh, uh, Mordechai as the archetype, the, the the symbol of a person who can connect to that inner inner uh, point within him. Yeah. And I think this is from the Megillah, and it's written in the Megillah, and. Um, and stand, uh, stand up for, to save themselves. I mean, literally it means uh, upon their lives, stand up for their lives, uh, but it means that they stood up to protect themselves in that situation. So, so the, the grammar in the, in the sentence in the Megillah is strange because it says, and he stood single to protect their lives, plural. That, that's the, the pasuk. Right, right. And, and also there's a comparison. He's making a comparison to the verse in Bereshis in Vayigash, where it says, the kol nefesh, mm -hmm. all the souls of the Jews who went down to Egypt were 70. Yeah. And it says, kol ha nefesh, again, it, Ba'amud ayin nefesh. That's right. Like a pillar. Yeah. Like one pillar of 70 parts. Mm -hmm. And in the verse in Bracious, it says, and they went down the 70 soul. Right. Which doesn't uh, go correlate in terms of uh, singular and plural. The idea is that, again, this idea of all of the uni unity of all of the, of the great collective soul. So that, that again, this is another example of, of that unity where the plural stand for a united singul singularity. Example that you, okay. <laughs> you jumped ahead a little bit. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so, so Rashi explains that also about the Ein, the, the, uh, the 70, 70 souls that, that came down to, uh, to Egypt, etc. The, the take home for me is that tomorrow during the day when I present uh, Mishle Ahmanais, when I present the gift of the, uh, the, of the uh, two cooked uh, foods to uh, my friends, my neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, whoever I'm going to be uh, in contact with tomorrow, I, ha I can have in mind not only that I'm performing the mit a mitzvah of the day, yeah. but in addition, I can, as I'm handing over, uh, uh, you know, the, the little package, the little basket, I can have in mind that 
a, gr- a gr- uh, like a, a cosmic thing is occurring. Mm-hmm. It's not just stama- a thing. I'm not just giving someone a hamatash to eat or, or a little thing of grape juice. Yeah. I'm actually performing a yichud. Yeah. Yichud. And it's very interesting in, the, in, in some of the sidurim and some of the prayer books, particularly the Sephardic ones, I've noticed. Mm-hmm. It says, and before you put on your tala, before you do a lot of mitzvot, yeah. it has a little sentence there that I should have in mind that I'm unifying God's name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, while performing that, right. and, and it's yichud. an interesting l'shem yichud, and and here l'shem yichud when I'm giving shalach manas, I'm literally yeah. because I'm seeing myself in the other, the other I'm seeing my myself as part of the other, and the yeah. other is within me, and we're all one with God, and all this yeah. really wild, uh, uh, trippy stuff, and yeah. it's really actually happening. Through the this simple act of, of kindness of giving over a little uh, yeah. a little package, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll try to have that a little bit in mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, I thank you. I, I I'll have I'll I'll take that if, with your permission. I'll take that as my intention as well. <laughs> and I, I'll just add to that that uh, you know o- often. I'll speak for myself, but I think this is more common than not. We, those of us who like to philosophize, you know, it's like I like to think about the unity of all the people, of all people, of the people of Israel, as some kind of philosophical, um, you know, place. So often I think about it as acceptance. Oh, I love everybody, so I'm, I'm open and I'm tolerant to everybody. And I think that what this is reminding me is, is there's actually a real emotional component to that, that this is real love. You know, the, the, the challenge is to not just accept somebody, but can I really, can I really see somebody and um, say, well, I have the potential to actually love you, you know, and that means I'll give you something, you know, because mm-hmm. have, you know, is lo- love is, uh, love is giving. So it's not, so, so it's beyond just mere tolerance or mere acceptance or mere philosophical, um, uh, you know, stance of, uh, yeah, everybody's equal and, you know, everybody has rights. And, and But but can I really meet people from a place that my heart is engaged in? And, uh, you know, so it's, it's almost uh, um, put myself in that place of Mashiach already. <laughs> and that that's not simple. It, it takes uh, um, um, melting away of, of my own barriers. You know, it's like I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to, um, in my out, in my non poor in mind, I don't go around and love everybody. <laughs> Baal Shem Tov could maybe could have done that, but I'm, I'm you know, it's like uh, people annoy me, people, you know, I, I have judgments, I mean, all that. But, uh, but to give Mishloch Manot and to say, you know, it's like, this is Mishloch Manot. That means that you're really like my Rea. You're really like you're really like God. You're also really like, like my intimate. You know, I love my son. I love my parents. Um, you know, so can I extend that to loving the person who's also the stranger? And that, that's that's the that's what I take here from the Sfat Emet. You know that Mishloch Manot nira lavo leahavat Yisrael to 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 the Ahavat Yisrael, not just to the philosophical, you know, kind of political. Um, uh, stance of of openness. Um, so anyway, that, that that's a challenge. That, that's a take home. I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying I'm ready to do that, but I'm ready to stretch into that a little more this part. So uh, yeah, with that, a bit of yada, and maybe you'll get there. A little bit, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a little bit mashke, a little bit uh, drink or two, and uh, you know that's, that's that more do- <laughs> more more doable. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, with that, we're going to uh, wish everybody a, a, a happy Purim, and, and we'll open the, uh, the room for those who are waiting in, uh, uh, in the meetup for a little bit of discussion. So shalom to everybody.